Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about drilling and hole making. Uh, so, twist drill was invented and patented back you know, quite a while ago, right? 160-ish years. Uh, and, but, you know, it hasn't changed a whole lot in that time period. They, they still work pretty well. So, somewhere, I don't know, 25% of machining operations would be hole making. Uh, and depth to diameter is key in, in hole making. So anything greater than three to one, you usually have to pay a little more attention. So, uh, you, know, you certainly wouldn't use like an end mill to drill anything with an aspect of more than, more than three to one. I mean, you could, it's just not, it's not, not a great idea. So, uh, and that defines sort of deep hole drilling and, uh, it gets a little tricky on what, what tool you should, should or shouldn't use. So we'll talk more about that later on. Uh, material removal rate you can approximate with three times drill diameter times velocity at cutting edge uh, times speed rate in inches per revolution. If you need to approximate material removal rate, usually fairly slow in drilling compared to like milling or turning. Uh, uh, simple procedure, complex process. Y you spin the drill bit and you're running into something, right? Uh, but there's a lot going on. Uh, you use two or more cutting edges. Uh, there, you're probably not ever going to have a drill bit with one cutting edge because then you're going to get asymmetric forces, and uh, it might cause the the, thing, the bit to walk. And you know something that's a really big diameter, or short depth of hole, you might be able to get by with just one cutting edge. But uh, two is very common in drills, and it might might increase, but uh, two is pretty common. Uh, it's relatively flexible. The drill bit is relatively flexible. Like an end, end mill shouldn't be flexible. Flexibility is bad on on an end mill, or it's bad on lathe tooling. Uh, a drill bit, it's you know since it has, does have a long aspect ratio, the length to cut to the diameter is very long. Uh, it's going to inherently be be flexible. Uh, cutting action occurs inside the workpiece, which is a challenge. Uh, getting chips out, getting heat out, uh, getting coolant in. Those are all all difficulties with drilling. Uh, all the chips have to get out past the drill bit, which means we probably will have to have some kind of flutes uh, to get chips out. Uh, and you've got chips going out, you want coolant to go in, and it can be, uh, you can have a problem with that, trying to get the cutting cutting edge lubricated. Uh, again, you've got rubbing friction on the side of it too, so that's going to create additional heat, and uh, that's going to cause tool, once, you know, certain materials they get hot, like high speed steel, right, gets, gets warm, relatively low temperature, compared to like uh, carbide. Uh, it gets soft, it gets dull, it gets hotter, and then the bit either breaks or you, you change it out. Or your surface finish is terrible. Uh, twist drills, the common drill bit. Uh, it's one of the, you know, when you're, when you're setting up a machine shop, one of the critical purchases. It's not that expensive, but something you have to buy is a really nice, complete set of twist drill bits. Uh, it's just one of those things you, you gotta have. Uh, there's all sorts of different sizes we'll talk about here in a bit. Uh, Cutting is done at the chisel here at the center, and it's done at the edge. I don't know why I'm using my mouse. Let me use my little pen. So, uh, cutting is done at the chisel and at the edge. Most of the actual work's done at the edge. The chisel's just sort of a, a necessary evil. It doesn't really do a great job, but it's necessary. Uh, they tend to walk or slide on initial cut. That's important. Uh, you usually need some kind of a start to get an accurate hole for uh, with a twist drill. Or use a you know very short drill bit to the diameter, uh, so it, so it's relatively stiff. Uh, but yeah, I mean it's, if you've ever drilled a lot of holes and stuff, you know that it can be challenging to get the hole started in the correct location. So uh, these can be these if they're made out of steel can be reground. Uh, it's not a trivial task. Some people can do it. Like expert machinists that have been around a while, they can do this by hand and do a really pretty good job. Uh, otherwise, they make different kinds of machines to, to automatically sharpen drill bits, and some of them work. Some of them don't. There's a bunch of YouTube videos on that if you want to search it. Drill Doctor is one, one of those brands. So uh, some of those work, some of those don't. I've used Drill Doctors before, and they, they, they don't work okay. They work, they work fine. You know, an expert machinist can usually do a really good job sharpening these things just with a bench grinder. I'm not that much of an expert. Uh, common materials, high speed steel, you know, for the cheaper bits, uh, high speed steel with a coating. My experience on drill bits is you lose the coating, uh, at the tip of these things really quick. Uh, so, and then once you grind it, then the, the coating's not there anymore. So in some ways, I don't know, I, you know, what I normally do for drill bits is I buy really nice, high quality, high speed steel, black oxide coated bits, which are the, the black oxide coating is, uh, 
it's cheaper than titanium nitride and uh, they they initially wear a little faster but you can regrind them it doesn't have that big of an effect on tool life and they don't cost a huge amount of money uh, so just just for example like a complete machinist tools uh, in drill index is somewhere like 227 drill bits something like that and a, a really good high-speed steel one's three to four hundred dollars for that and that sounds like a huge amount of money uh, but it's a lot of very precise, very nice drill bits, uh, and and you know you're not gonna burn through a whole set of those. So I mean, one set lasts a lifetime as long as you replace the bits you do break and wear out over time. So it's one of those things that a good initial purchase in drill bits is 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 critical. That's something that uh, uh, it, it makes your life a lot easier if you've got a really nice set of drill bits. You know, if you buy these little, I would, this is a little drill index here. If you're a machinist, that's not even close to what you need to get started you need really the, the the ones that you want they've got all of the fraction or the number bits on one side all the letter bits on one side and then they've got a whole bunch on the back a whole bunch of little bits in there and it's like over 200 drill bits and and machining drill index and it's got all the drill bits you need for about every kind of hole you'd possibly ever want to drill uh, but it's expensive because it's all it's a lot of tooling but uh, it's worth it to buy good drill bits it's something that you if you're machining metal you should never skimp on on drill bits uh, carbide yeah i've never drilled that much with carbide I use carbide end mills quite a bit but carbide drill bits i'm sure it gets expensive and you're going to chip them that's a, the problem with carbide is it, it chips and then it's it's done and you know it's, yeah it's just for certain applications i can see it but uh, it, just in general, in general machining, high speed steel works works pretty well. There might be some really hard materials that you need to use carbide for. Uh, cobalt steel, you know, be an upgrade from regular high speed steel. Twist drill nomenclature. So the part that you chuck into is the shank. The part that you do the drilling with is the body. Uh, the flute length is going to be a little bit less. That's you're not going to be able to drill a hole past you know somewhere around here because you got to get chips out of this thing. Uh, it gets really problematic when you tr start getting down to that depth where you can't get chips out. And you can only really take very small pecks before the, the flutes load up uh, and you've got to clear them out. And it becomes a giant pain. So in that case, you, you need to get a longer drill bit. Um, helix angle, right? these are almost always going to have some kind of helix for pumping chips out. Uh, the heel down here at the bottom, the land out here at the top. Uh, the margin here is the, the true finished ground outside diameter of this thing, so that's going to define your diameter. Uh, you've got the point angle here, which is this internal angle between the points, uh, the lip here and the lip length. You've got the chisel here at the center. Most drills are chisel point. Uh, you've got a little bit of relief angle on the chisel. I mean, this this is the harder part to grind on it. You know, this is relatively simple here because your your cutting edge is right right there, uh, and so if you just grind this angle off, you you really get a new cutting edge. The problem is getting this this chisel ground correctly and relieved correctly. That's that's the art in drill bit grinding is getting getting that chisel to work out. Uh, yeah, chisel edge, it, it acts as a cutting edge, but really all it's doing, I mean, it's not, because if you think about the velocity on this, right, the outside of this thing has a high velocity, right, you know, V is omega times R, so the highest velocity is out here, and that the high, that's where your, your main cutting is, is happening. Here, towards the center, the velocity is zero at the center, uh, but you've got material to remove at the center, so you have no velocity, radially anyway, no, no velocity like this here. Uh, but you're trying to axially push this thing in so the only the only thing that can happen is material gets smushed out of the way That's literally the only way you can you can drill something that doesn't already have a pilot hole in it is a mush material out of the center So that's really what the chisel is doing is mushing material out getting it to a cutting edge where it actually gets formed into a chip uh, and and it's just a problem it's always easier much much easier to drill a hole if you've already got a pilot hole in uh, because the the chisel action's already been been done by the smaller drill bit. So in fact, you know, most of the time I'll drill not a fairly small pilot hole because you drill a small pilot hole with a really small bit, you can break the bit, especially in a harder material, and then you, it's almost impossible to get broken drill bits out of things because they're you know inherently a very hard thing that is brittle and it's just it's it's a giant pain. You don't want to do it. So uh, depending on the size of the hole, like you know, for for most things, a quarter inch size if that works is a pretty good pilot hole. In my experience, uh, and then you can 
basically go with the size you're going to drill after that, and it works works pretty well. And there's not a huge point in stepping up, like quarter, five sixteenths, three eighths. That, that that doesn't make any sense in most cases because again, it's really it's really about what's going on at the center of this thing. And as long as you're cutting out here on uh, on the lip, uh, the thing's going to cut well. It's going to it's going to cut fine. Uh, it's just gets the chisel's the hard part. Uh, this is going to leave a burr at the exit for through holes. Something you ought to do a little bit of burr removal on. It's just something you have to live with. Uh, and that's where your heat, that's where your cutting forces are going to come from is, is here at the chisel. So the chisel is very important. Uh, drill angles. Uh, so when you buy your three or four five hundred dollar set of drill bits, uh, they're probably going to be 118. That's kind of the most common generic uh, uh, point angle. There's some other ones for specialty materials, you know, brittle materials, cast iron, you might want a little bit less. Uh, for ductile materials, aluminum, brass, copper, you might want a little more. For plastics, you want a pretty pretty small point angle. Uh, it depends on materials. 118 is a good compromise, though. I mean, I, I don't have a lot of specialty drill bits for materials. I mean, again, when you're getting into mass production uh, or really tricky materials, you might need something something different, but 118 is pretty common and works, works pretty well for most materials. It's a good compromise. Uh, again, so as you drill, uh, a small hole, small hole is going to be formed by the chisel edge. Uh, that's going to push chips into the cutting edge. You're going to start to get chip formation uh, on the lip, and then that's going to eventually get out here to where it's at its highest velocity, and you get nice chip formation if the tool is sharp. Uh, and then the chips are going to get broken off, and they may be continuous chips uh, or discontinuous chips, depending on your speeds and feeds. Uh, and they're going to get fed back out through the helix, the helices, helixes, helices. I don't know, uh, out to uh, to you know where the outside of the, the workpiece. Uh, the drill bit will be guided on the margins by rubbing against the wall of the hole. That's going to cause the surface finish and accuracy of the, the hole to suffer if you're just using a drill bit. Uh, you're, you're inherently going to get the margins rubbing on the walls of this thing, and it's going to booger up the surface finish and uh, create extra heat that you got to get rid of, uh, and it's going to make the hole not not very accurate. So, uh, you usually, if you need like thousandth accuracy or wall you know, concentricity on on and sizing on a hole, uh, you're going to do some kind of finishing operation on it that, that's not twist drilling. Again, I will post the links to the videos. Uh, in the description. Uh, different kinds of twist drills. So I, I don't like this diagram because your your basic twist drill is just going to have a. Let me get back to a picture. Come on. These are your basic drills you're going to encounter, and, and especially in small scale machining, uh, and they're going to have a straight shank. They're not going to have any kind of feature for indexing them in. Uh, if you don't chuck them in tight enough, they're going to rotate, and that destroys the shank on these things. Uh, the shank is usually the diameter of the margin out here where you're cutting, and not always, but usually for these smaller twist drills. When you start getting into bigger drill bits, you start getting into bits that actually have shanks on them, uh, and those can be straight shanks or taper shanks to go into some kind of a standard Morse taper. Uh, it depends on what kind of lathe you have. Uh, so this is a straight shank with a tang. Uh, this is a Morse taper with a tang, uh, and there'll be like an MT3 or 4 or something like that uh, that will be in the quill. There'll be a taper in there, and then this thing will just wedge into that, and that wedging pressure will hold this thing in place uh, up to a point. You, can, you know, But usually since there's the chisel force is going to be pushing this thing in, it causes it to wedge more, and these things won't rotate if, uh, if things worked out right. Uh, you could have some kind of notches for preventing rotation. Uh, again, th these for for chucking drill bits into a lathe, like in a t quill, usually something like this. Uh, these I haven't seen a lot of. You see some of these uh, that, that have some kind of a notch for preventing rotation, but the taper ones for the bigger drill bits is pretty pretty common. Some other shapes for holding it too, uh, but it's either going to be a straight shank or uh, a taper is probably the most common for for. You know, normal manufacturing uh, sizes. There's numbers, letters, and fractions in SAE land and metric. It's all millimeters. Uh, but number is really small. So from thirteen thousandths to almost a quarter of an inch. 
Uh, letter is a little bit bigger than that, so A to Z, 0 0.234 to 0 0.413, and then you got all your fractional ones. So when you buy a, like a machining drill index, it's going to be uh, numbers and letters. Yeah, numbers, letters, and fractional is what it'll have. So uh, the numbers will be in a little row along the back, the letters will be on like the right-hand side, and the fractional will be on the left-hand side. Uh, and so you've got, you know, you've got 80 drill bits here to get from zero to 80, you've got 26 there, and then you've got all your fractional. You can see where you get 200 drill bits pretty pretty quick. And so why why all this? You know, if you're going to drill quarter inch holes or five sixteenths holes, you know, if you're doing woodworking, it's you know a fractional set's all you need. Uh, but when you need to drill a hole for a tap for a quarter inch tap, you need some obscure size that's very precise beneath that. Uh, so you, you just need a lot of drill bits to fill all the gaps between all these things. So, so you've got, you know, 13 thousandths to 228 thousandths there in 80. Uh, what's that? You know, somewhere around 3 thousandths in between these things. Uh, yeah, you got a lot of, right, you can pretty well get anything, including most metric sizes, if you've got a, a full number letter fractional drill index. Uh, so the, the, the fractional ind uh, yeah, indexes, indices, I don't know, go up to a half inch. That's, that's a standard drill index will go up to. It'll be 1 through 80, A through Z, and then it'll have uh, up to fractional up to a half inch. Uh, then you start getting into the gigantic drill bits, and it's a different, different thing. But, you know, normal drill index is the 1 through 80, A through Z, and uh, one of the smallest. I can't remember if it's like a 16th up to a half inch and 64th increments but something like that and it's around 200 drill bits uh, and then there's the metric ones but honestly I've never really had to use a metric drill bit I don't think ever you know complete drill index is close enough that uh, it's usually not an issue uh, types of drills continued here uh, so for really high aspect uh, large depth to diameter you know not greater than three to one you'll use twist drills on holes greater than three to one all the time uh, you know if you need 10 to one if you need 20 to one if you need 100 to one you're gonna need to do a gun drill so a gun drill literally is for making you know this thing was invented and, and developed and perfected for drilling the hole down the barrel of guns uh, so if you think about like big battleship guns and stuff like that, you know, the Iowa class 16 inch uh, rifles that they used, I uh, had a 50 caliber long barrel, which means like 16 inches times 50. Uh, that's how long the hole was. So whatever 800 inches is. So that would be an aspect ratio of 50 to one. Uh, you can't just take a twist drill bit that's 50 times longer than its diameter and run it down the barrel and have it be accurate at all. Uh, so for that, there's going to be some kind of a, it's a specialty drill called a gun drill, uh, and it looks a lot different than a regular twist drill. I mean, it's got one flute here, uh, one cutting face, but it's got lots of ability to index on the walls of the hole. Uh, it's usually going to be guided by a bearing somewhere right up against the hole you're going to drill. You're going to put a bearing on it to reduce deflection of this thing. Uh, there's going to be some kind of way to get cutting oil into this thing to clear, or a cutting fluid in there to clear out chips. That's a specialty thing, and they're going to be more expensive. The, the lathe that you need or the drill you need for that's more sophisticated. Uh, but, yeah, again, these are pretty, if you need to do very high aspect holes, you need something like this. If you don't ever need to do really big high aspect holes, uh, you don't ever use them. So like, I, I've never really had to use a gun drill for anything. I'm just everything has been somewhere around this 3 to 1 or close enough that a twist drill would work. But again, sometimes you need very deep holes for the diameter. Uh, center drills, you're going to almost always pilot a hole with a center drill. They look something like this. They're relatively short cutting to the diameter, so the high aspect ratio is really low. That makes it stiff. That means you can get a very accurate positioning. There'll be a chamfer and a start here, and then you'll usually go down to this part of the chamfer. Uh, you don't machine down here, so don't do not do that. You need somewhere on the chamfer on this thing. They make all sorts of different sizes of these things. The quarter inch one's pretty common for, for small type machining, but they go up to gigantic size too. I accidentally ordered one inch. Uh, actually, I ordered the, spec'd out the correct thing, but the person that ordered them ordered the wrong ones of these, and I got some one inch uh, center drills, and I don't know if I ever used any of those for anything. Uh, Tray panning drills, that's where they, they leave a core. It's kind of like a hole saw in wood. 
Uh, spade drills, if you've done any woodworking, you use the spade drill. Same concept exists for metal. This is going to be some kind of a carbide insert, though. Uh, combination where you've got multiple diameters, uh, you know, very specialty. Reamers, I hate to lump these in with drill bits. A reamer is kind of a totally different thing. Uh, they look different, they act different. Uh, a reamer is going to have a straight shank. That's usually a lower diameter than the cutting edge, and then there's usually several straight flutes. Uh, and I used to, actually, there might be a slide on this coming up, so I'll hold up on that. Uh, again, the videos I'll include links for, so we'll skip those. Uh, hole saws, you know, if you've done woodworking, you've used hole saws. Uh, usually for thinner materials or softer materials, uh, or masonry. This is a masonry hole saw here. They'll usually be a pilot. These things are almost impossible to start without a pilot. Uh, insert drills uh, for really quick hole making. You know, for a certain size, you need some minimum size for these to make any sense. Uh, where you use little carbide inserts here. Uh, these might not be center cutting. If they're not center cutting, you're going to have to do a pilot, and then you can come in with one of these things. Uh, I've seen some of these. I haven't really used them for anything. But... Um, it, certain applications, you know, if you need an inch diameter hole four inches deep and you need it quick, those would work. Uh, reamers. I don't know pictures of them. So anyway, a reamer, straight shank, slightly bigger cutting edge, a six to eight, something like that, flutes. Uh, they'll usually be straight or helical. They're most commonly they're, they're straight. Uh, hand reamers will be tapered more down here to get things started. Chucking reamers will only be tapered down here at the bottom. In fact, most reamers I've ever used are chucking reamers. They're pretty common. You usually buy a chucking reamer set. Uh, you can kind of use them by hand, uh, but they're best used in a machine tool, you know, a drill of some, some kind or a mill. Uh, RPM is going to be way down on a reamer versus a drill bit. Uh, feed is going to be relatively slow, uh, and you feed slow in and slow out. Your feed out is usually the same as your feed in. Uh, so what a reamer is going to give you a straighter hole that's more concentric, that's got, uh, it's going to be more accurate, and it's going to have a better surface finish. So it's really good for finishing a lot. So somewhere around 10 to 15 thousandths of an inch is what I like to leave on a hole. So use a drill bit that's somewhere around 15 to 20, uh, 10 to 20, I'll say, thousandths smaller than the reamer, the hole. So if you wanted a half inch hole that was precise, you'd use uh, the drill bit next down from a half inch, you know, by five or ten thousandths or, you know, maybe up to twenty thousandths. Uh, and then you use a half inch reamer. Uh, they make one of the greatest investments I've ever made in machining. They make reamers that are half a thousandth undersized and half a thousandth oversized. It's called an over under set. So you'll be a half inch, but then there'll be uh, 0 0.50005 and 0.4995 uh, and those over under reamers are are fantastic if you need you know just a little bit extra room for like a slip fit or if you need a little bit of a press fit that works that works fantastic those that's a really handy set of things to have as an over under set uh, shell reamers uh, so that's where you have a, a shank that's that's common you can in, in exchange different different actual tool bodies on it uh, those are only going to be for really really big reamers so you have three quarter inch holes are bigger uh, expansion reamers uh, these will have a few thousandths range of adjustability uh, there'll be some kind of ability to to expand or contract the the cutting edges on it slightly you know talking just a few thousandths for the same reason why you'd want the adjustable reamers uh, then they make adjustable reamers that have a bigger range of adjustment. They're, they're expensive. Uh, process to attain an accurate finished hole. You're almost always going to center drill. Almost always. Uh, drill with a twist drill. Uh, depending on how accurate you need, uh, you might true by boring. For small holes, you're not going to probably true by boring. Uh, you know, for an inch hole, you might want to... It depends on, depends on what you're trying to do. It depends on what you're what the, your specifications are and for, for how straight this has to be and how concentric it has to be. Uh, in most cases, you can usually do one, two, and then ream it, and uh, that'll, that'll get it. In almost all cases, that'll work. Sometimes that doesn't work. Uh, I had to do a, an oil pressure relief valve uh, for a dry sump oil system once where it had to be bored. It, it was a weird size and a weird location. It had to be perfect. 
and uh, I had to, to drew it by boring after I drilled the hole. Uh, and sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, but again, mostly it's just one, two, three. Sorry, one, two, four. One, two, four is common. One, two, three, four only in certain really precise applications. Uh, but finishing with the reamer is almost always part, part of it. Uh, drill type selection. So down here in the under an inch hole diameter, three to one, you know, in this zone, you're going to want to use a twist drill for, for most things. Uh, you can push twist drills a little bit this way. Uh, but once you start getting past three to one, there's some other options like gun drill, especially if you get more to that 10 to one or 20 to one, you're talking about gun drills and there's some other specialty drills out here. Uh, but yeah, for, for this range, you're talking twist drills, uh, above an inch, they make twist drills, but at that point, maybe a spade drill, uh, you know, maybe some kind of an indexable insert drill, uh, well, might be a good option at that point in time, but tw they make twist drills up to the size too. They get expensive, they get heavy, and they get more of a thing to sharpen and maintain. Uh, and the forces required to to the, the horsepower of the machine go up quite a bit. Uh, for really deep, very big holes, you get into some specialty stuff, you know, BTA and ejector drills. Which I honestly don't even know what a BTA drill is, but you could Google that. Uh, again, if you're in this range here twist drills get get most of that so when you start getting into bigger holes here that's when you start needing specialty specialty drills uh, related operations a counter bore so if you need a bolt head to be uh, sub you know flush here uh, they make counter boarding tools that will make a nice sharp cornered uh, counter bore counter sink right if you're using a flat socket headed cap screw that's got a bevel on it uh, you use countersink, you need to make sure the angle of your countersink is the same as the angle of, or close enough to the angle of your, your fastener. Uh, spot facing, so if you're trying to, if you've got a round thing and you need to drill a hole into it this way, you usually need to provide a spot face for your center, center drill to index on. That'll usually be a milling operation. Uh, so you'll mill a flat, you'll use a center drill, and then you'll drill through. Uh, that's common. Or rough surface finishes or round surface finishes, you need a place for your center drill to, to, to stick. Uh, drilling machinery, vertical drill press, very common. Uh, I don't know what this failure video is. Anyway, uh, I've injured myself drilling before. You need to make sure you hold your workpiece very well. And in metal machining, you don't want to be holding it by hand. That's it. Don't in metal machining, you should probably not ever be holding the material by hand because uh, the cutting forces are going to be high, and when it spins around, it's going to probably be sharp or be heavy. And it, just don't do it. So uh, there will always be some way of holding. The thing you're trying to drill will be a quill uh, that will allow that drill spindle to move up and down. There'll be the spindle that provides torque. There'll be some way of feeding it down. Uh, there'll be some kind of a feed control, a little gear head, pulley, something like that, or a variable speed transmission. Uh, there'll be some kind of a column for the table to go up and down. You know, your drill presses always look something like, like this. Very easy to underestimate. Yeah, so uh, these things might be a horsepower, two horsepower, and your hands are right here. You, drilling, honestly, of Drilling versus milling, you usually pay less attention when you're drilling a hole, and that's when you run into safety issues. So, um, one of the things, there's little requirements like don't wear gloves when drilling. Uh, you, the worst thing that can happen when you're drilling is to get a piece of clothing or hair caught in it and it spin around and do terrible things. Uh, so, you know, no gloves, no long hair. To, or, you know, tie back long hair, roll back sleeves. Uh, you really just want to minimize the amount of stuff that can get caught in, in this as it, as it spins around. I had a student injured in the shop uh, last year using a drill press and a long bit bent and whipped around in a was, was dangerous situation. So uh, you got to be careful when drilling. You don't want anything, you know, that you don't want caught in a drill bit and wrapped around anywhere close to one of these things. So make sure your parts held well. Uh, you know, make sure everything's clear. You don't have anything dangling in, in the way here. Ready alarm drill press. These are you see some of these, but they're they're pretty rare outside of heavy industry. Um, so it's just a big gigantic vertical machine. But this radial alarm can uh, raise lower motors back here for the spindle. Uh, just just a heavier duty, but same same concept. Uh, gang drill. So when you need to do multiple bits at the same or multiple holes at the same time, as we uh, gang drill, it's just multiple drill presses all sort of ganged together. 
Uh, Multi-spindle, so if you look at things like cylinder heads where there's a whole bunch of holes for cylinder bolt or for head bolts that need to be machined in something. Uh, if you're trying to mass produce things, you might have an adjustable uh, multi-spindle where here there's some little flexible drive shafts and you can move these things around and get different patterns and still machine stuff pretty quick, you know, relatively low production levels. Uh, you know, if you need to make a whole bunch of something, a geared spindle, multiple spindle, uh, so again, like the cylinder head example, uh, you'd have a drill bit, a spindle for each of the holes you need to drill. And you can get those all geared to be different speeds for different size holes or different materials. And you can drill all of them in, in one, one pass. For holes that are close, very close together, you might not be able to get gears in there. And a, a gearless multiple spindle would, would work. I mean, these are only going to be in mass, mass production. Uh, turret drilling machines. It's a drill machine that's got a turret on it. There's, uh, we've got a little CNC robo drill is what it's called. But it's got a little turret like this and it works like a CNC machine. Uh, but it's mainly designed for rapidly drilling holes. So we can do, uh, you know, if you wanted to do a center drill, or actually it's like a spot drill, center drill, pilot drill, index drill, uh, reamer, something like that. And these machines are really well suited for that. They usually have limited X and Y travel and a lot of Z travel. Uh, and then they can really very quickly change change tool. Uh, there's manual turret drilling machines too. Uh, the CNC one's just an automated version of the manual turret one. Beam line for drilling holes, like all the way down with these big beams for uh, flanges, uh, bolt flanges or rivets. Uh, they make these big beam drill and line drilling machines that can walk down the beam and, and drill holes. They make magnet drills or they're for like, uh, if you wanted to drill a hole in a big plate of steel out in a, in a job site where you didn't have a big drill press, they make magnet drills that are have very powerful electromagnets that hold the, the drill bit down. Uh, if you also want to drill a hole into a safe, you see that in movies sometimes, but uh, that would work too. They make magnet drills that you could pop up against anything that's uh, ferromagnetic and, and drill a hole in it. Uh, Causes of drilling problems, outer corners break down, cutting speed's too high. Uh, that that happens sometimes. You break corners off, and then you really have to replace the drill bit or regrind it at that point in time. Uh, cutting compound, coolant usually helps with that. Uh, flutes clogging is always a problem. You need to make sure your chips are coming out of the flutes or it's not going to work. Uh, lips chip, too aggressive on the feed, uh, or wrong drill bit. Uh, checks or cracks and cutting lips got hot and then cooled. Uh, so it's just, just, a, just a heat cracking. Chip margin, uh, oversized jig bushing. I've never had that happen. Uh, drill bit breaks. I have had that happen. It's not ground correctly. You're feeding it too aggressively. Uh, it's bending. It's buckling and breaking. Uh, the fixture or workpiece bent. Uh, the drill bit stole or clogged with chips. Uh, the tang breaks off if it doesn't fit in a tapered socket very well you need to re-ream the socket you can get a morse uh, reamer and you can ream out uh, the socket in a quill if that happens and that happened in a lathe over in the maker space where somebody killed the uh, taper in the quill and had to ream it out and it works perfectly fine after reaming uh breaks when drilling brass or wood wrong drill bit clogged with chips but yeah fluke clogging with chips is like the number one thing here and drill getting dull and fluke clogging with chips those are the two main problems Splits up center. Never had that happen. Uh, will not enter work. Uh, drills dull. Webs too heavy. Rip reliefs, reliefs too small. You know, so or you know, sometimes you're just trying to drill material that you can drill, uh, and you might need to switch away to something like an inserted drill. If you're trying to drill an incredibly hard steel with a high-speed steel drill bit, it might just not work. Uh, hole rough. Uh, dull. No cutting compound or fluid. Uh, feed too great. Fixture not rigid. Hole oversize, unequal angle of the cutting edges causes the tip to walk, uh, unequal length of the cutting edges. Uh, chip shape changes while drilling, uh, you're getting dull, more than likely. So, uh, or, you know, when you get really deep into a hole, you might not be able to get the chips out, and so they might load up. And so they're not really, the chip formation is the same, they just look different because of the way they load up. That happens a lot. Uh, large chip coming from one flute, small from the other, your point's asymmetric. Uh, one lip's doing all the cutting, you need to regrind grind your tool. So, all right, that's it for uh, drilling and hole making, uh, and I'll see you all next time.